I have prepared a message. And when we were praying, when we were worshiping there before this preaching time, a thought came to my mind because today I really want to speak to our hearts today. Amen. So please, by the grace of the Lord, let us open in our hearts. So that thought came into me and told me that, you know, don't stress on your message. In some points, simply share your own testimony. Because there are many, many things that are a real teaching in everything you have been passing through. You know, when it comes to preaching, someone told me one day that the best message you can preach ever is the message of your testimony. Yes. The best message you can preach is your testimony. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that they have overcome through the blood of the Lamb and through the word of their testimony. Are we together? So I will gladly share my testimony concerning many points that I encountered in my life and where the hand and the power of Jesus finally allowed me to overcome. And I believe what I will be saying we also explain you that heart we are talking about when it comes to the heart of the Lord. When it comes to the heart of the Lord. When it comes to the heart of the Lord. Are we together? Last Sunday, we saw that the heart and the burden of the bride are really, really the key to our own transformation. And if you remember, because I will not explain all of that, we don't have any time today don't have too much time. We have simply explained that the church needs a transformation. Can you say with me a transformation? A transformation to reach that level of relationship that we call the bride and the bridegroom. That means the church and Christ Jesus. Are we together? Only that level of intimacy allow us as a church and as a bride of Christ Jesus to overcome any situation we are facing in our lives. Whosoever is working in that level of relationship is also working in that level of intimacy that is really, really put apart and set apart for those who have developed what we call the heart of the Lord. Amen? So the point I really want, I really want to stress on today is really going in depth in what we call the heart the heart of the Lord. The heart of the Lord. Can you say with me the heart of the Lord? By the grace of the Lord. The preaching time today will not be too long. Why? Simply because we had a good time of worship and praise. Amen. 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 And that's good because you know on Sunday, you know that worshiping and praising on Sunday is much more important than preaching. Yes. That is why we are raising up on Sunday. In the Bible, each time that you will read the Old Testament, and that they will talk about the time where people are going to the temple. They are not always talking about preaching. But each time they are talking about offerings. Offerings, worshipping, worshipping, worshipping the Lord. So they were going to Jerusalem in order to worship the Lord and to give some present to the Lord. So when we are here to worship and to praise the Lord, that is what we are doing somehow. Amen. So on Sunday, it has to do with that level of worship and praise um, above the overall program that we might have. But preaching time is also important because it's so, so, so important to share, to share the word, the word, the word, the word, the word of God. Amen. The idea of what we call the heart of God. Can you say with me the heart of God? The heart of God might seem a bit vague to us from the first perspective. Because when I say the heart of God, it's just like, okay, so it has nothing to do with biology, by the way. Okay, it's not that hard. You can't, you know, it's okay, okay. We are really talking about what is really, really, let us say, uh, the values of God and so on. But 
for us to have a better comprehension. I will first take some examples in the Bible to illustrate the behavior behind that heart you are talking about. To illustrate the values behind that. First of all, let us take this, this text of the scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 24 to 28. 1 Samuel, okay, thank you, chapter 1. So the story is now talking about Hannah. Do you know Hannah in the Bible? Anna, do you know? All of us, we know the story of Hannah. So something is really important there. Is that Hannah made the commitment after trying for several years to have a son. She finally, first of all, changed the way she was praying. Amen. And made the commitment <laughs> to kind of preparing a son and a prophet for the Lord. So the verse here says, Now when she had went him, she took him up with her, with tribbles, one a father of flour and a skin of wine. So that is their offering, as we are offering today, our offerings and so on, bank transfer and so on. That, is, that way they are kind of bank transfer. And brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. He was young. Can you say with me? He was young. He was young. Okay, let us move forward. Verse 25. The Bible says in the verse 25, Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli and so on. Okay, 26. And she said, Oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. She's talking to the prophet Eli. As your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. Verse 27. For this child I pray, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I ask of him, and he will grant you that petition you are also raising, by the way. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. Oh, can you say with me? As long as he lives. As long as he lives. As long as he lives. He shall be lent to the Lord. Okay. He shall be lent to the Lord as long as he lives. That means she made the decision to have that child born. And then after, she took the young boy to really abandon him to the Lord and went back home. So it was not a kind of temporary period. That was the overall life of this boy. A high level of offering. That means I have been asking for a boy, for a son. And I expressly made the decision that the unique, the unique son that I have without even knowing if I will be having another child in my life to take that child and to give to the Lord. If you read the other verses, you will see that when she back home, she didn't have any, any confidence or any kind of guarantee that she would have another child. Do you know that? Are we together? So why did she do that? Because she finally understood the burden of the Lord. And she was, she was, she was, she was, she was so willing to fix the issue that God was encountering. That she made the decision to forget her own desire. She made the decision to forget her own desire. Are we together? She made the decision to put, to let aside her own desire. And having that child. 
dedicated to the Lord. Are we together? So that example is so deep because if we go further in what we call the heart of God, first of all, the heart of God is manifested in us when we are ready, when we are ready to die to our own desires. Are we together? <laughs> I know that that word might seem very difficult for us to accept. Because believe me, we all know that. It's not that easy to put aside what is so precious to our hearts. Simply because you are in love with God. It's not that easy. Let us say, for example, in your life, you finally manage to be graduated, let us say, from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, or whatsoever. Or let us take another example. You finally had a high position with a high level of salary and so on. And all of that, one day, God appears to you. That means he is sending, for example, his angel Gabriel. So that there will not be any confusion for you to know that God is speaking to you. And he tell you, all what you have earned there, abandon that. And go in Africa, in Kisidugu, for my ministry. <laughs> in a village, what we call behind Africa. <laughs> for my ministry. What will you say? Will you say yes? We are together, family. We are together. Oh, let us speak. Oh, will you say yes? <laughs> My brother say, if this happened, he will say, it's not really the voice of God. It's not Gabriel. Your name is not Gabriel. <laughs> will you say yes? Will you say yes? That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. The heart of God is manifested in us when we are no longer living ourselves on our personal ambitions. That is what we call the heart of God. I am deeply living for God alone. Everything in me is simply driven by the desire to please that God. To listen to his burden. And I am so in love with him. That I am ready, ready, ready to abandon anything that I used to see as precious to me. Are we together? Are we together? Let us say, now, everything is going well in your life. And suddenly something happened some difficult troubles and like job you finally lost everything I'm not praying for that to happen in your life oh. I am just preaching please bear with me I'm just preaching oh. uh -huh. someone will say that is a curse it's not a curse it's a preaching are we together okay so just like job something happened in your life you lost everything every Everything falls apart. Everything falls apart. My question. Will you still worship the Lord the same way? Are we together? Will you still love that God the same way? Will you start to complain? Will you start to complain? Very honestly. You know, when I receive an answer to my prayer, I haven't been. Ah, 
my lord my love i want my marriage i am waiting for my husband <laughs> i'm waiting for my husband i'm waiting for my husband oh there are some brothers in the church they are not looking at me please please touch her touch her and one day a handsome young boy come and sees you and he says you seem to be the person i was looking for okay everything starts and he's a good person he's even a good person that means everything is okay on his side he's not complicated okay yes because we have seen some kind of people anyway and then he asks you for your hand he will gladly marry you and he say would you marry me so your prayer has been answered okay so when everything is right like that, you are so full of joy. Even if I tell you, hello, good morning, you will be able to give me 50 pounds. Simply because I tell you, good morning. Because you are so happy, so happy, so happy. So in that way, it is so easy to worship the Lord. Of course, it's very easy. I surrender all to you. Oh my Lord, you answer my prayer. Yes, to you, yes. Everything I need, I need is you. Oh, ho, ho. With holding nothing. Oh, With holding nothing. So that worship is so good to me. Okay. So my question now. If everything falls apart, will you worship the same way? Will you still be worshiping the Lord? Will you still worshiping the Lord? Will you still worshiping the Lord? Will you worship the Lord the same way? With the same heart? With the same joy? With the same joy? Very honestly. Very honestly. When it comes to what we call the heart of Lord, that means, regardless of all the situation I'm facing, regardless of what I am working through, my love is unconditional. That means, I will not have any condition of seeing an answer to have that level of love that I used to have before. Are we together? Are we together? I say that because it is not that easy and we need to be honest. It's not that easy. Even if you raise your hand here to tell me if that happens to me, I will still have the same behavior, loving that God, serving Him, worshiping Him, giving my offerings. If your hand raised spontaneously to tell that, I will tell you, go and think about once again. Yes, believe me. It's not that easy, but it's the grace of the Lord. It's the grace of the Lord. It's the grace of the Lord. Even on very little things. My sister betrayed me. And that was so painful. And the Lord says, forgive. But you remember. And maybe you are right. Because in that situation. From, let us say, talking about the justice talking about what she did bad to you that was something she was not expected to act like that and she was wrong and yet the Lord says not only should you forgive but also manifest that love to her help her in that situation will you be ready to do that my sister please tell me simply because of that heart in you people who are treating you 
For some people, that is even in the corporate world. That means in the company. Maybe your colleagues are making fun of you. You are just alone on your path. And all of them, they are against you. Are you able to manifest that level of love simply because God asked you to do that? I am a young person in university. And everything is very difficult. I'm struggling in everything. My friends and all the fellow students, they are all there in university. And no one is even looking at me. I'm struggling from a financial perspective. I'm struggling to understand what is being talked there. Everything is difficult. You know the true heart of God is really, really, really assessed when you are facing difficulties. It's not when everything is good. Are we together? Are we together? When everything is falling apart in your life, believe me, that is the moment where God is looking at you. And He even doesn't say anything. He's simply looking at you to see what you will do and how you will behave. Believe me. With humility. I remember some years ago in my own life. As many of you know, I used to be married. And when my former wife came to tell me, I asked for divorce. Believe me, believe me, everything fell apart in my life. Everything. I was not expecting that decision. I didn't even saw it came. I didn't even see it came, came in my life. There was not any sign to say, oh, warning, warning, something is coming. I was just like, everything is good. And then that happened. Believe me, everything fell apart. I was, you know, ministering with many people. I remember that maybe a couple of days after, I had what we call in French retreat. Uh, it was not, yes, yes, it was a kind of camp, okay? With young people, there were like 50 people. And I was bringing all of them somewhere in France for a weekend to ministry, to have minister with them, to counsel them for all of those activities. So I was organizing that. And when, 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 I received that decision. Believe me. <laughs> Even the strength that I needed to stand up like that was difficult. I pray for you to never <laughs> go through this kind of situation in your life. I was just like, I cannot explain. It's very difficult to explain. Very difficult. Very difficult to explain. Very difficult. But despite that, I was there praying the Lord and I said, Father, I am serving you. And yet you didn't tell me that this was about to come in my life. I started to pray and I was just like, and for the first time in my life, that question I'm asking you came to ask me, in this situation, are you still serving the Lord? That means everything that you have in your diary, are you still fulfilling that? I brought all of my own people to that program. They were so happy. No one among them knew what I was passing through. No one. I was just like, no strength, 
no happiness. Everything was down. But I was standing before them. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Are you okay? I don't understand. Check, check, check. Please, okay. Everything was down in my life. Everything. After that program, they just jumped on me. Oh, don't, don't stop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are so happy. You are good, you are good, you are good. I brought them back. And then I went to my home with the heart full of pain. Full of pain. But in that situation, I was also responsible of a ministry in the church. I was managing 70 people, more than that, almost 80 people. Even all of them, they didn't know what I was passing through. Even all of them, they didn't know. I didn't reduce my level of serving God. Never. Never, never, never. I was still serving God over and over. I was present. Only my pastors knew what was happening in my life. Only my pastors. I have been serving the Lord. That happened in July. August I was there. September. October. November I received the official letter of divorce. Even if I was trying to get her back. Nothing. Nothing. Sending prison. Asking for fog. Nothing. The situation was even going worse. But I was serving God. I was still serving God. I was still serving God. I was still serving my God. I was still serving my, my Lord. I was still serving my Lord. I was still serving my Lord. With tear, but serving my Lord anyway. Praying like never before. I started what we call the, the fast, fasting of Esther for her to come back. And after that fasting, she told me, I don't want to see you anymore. In my house, I was sleeping on the ground. I was sleeping on the ground. Raising any kind of supplication. Nothing. But still serving the Lord. I came to the conclusion that I am a slave of Jesus. I am a slave of Jesus. So when I was passing through that, I didn't even know what would be the issue of that. And one day, because you believe me, it was difficult. Even on psychology point of view, it was very difficult. In the same day, in, in, the, in the same, uh, 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 yes, in the same period, I started a new position in my company and so on. That was some years ago. And I was just like, they were waiting me at a high level of performance. The ministry was meeting, waiting me at a high level of performance. I have also a family and so on. But yet everything in my life was just down. How can I stand in, the, in such a situation? It's just impossible. But in that situation, I discovered one key that I didn't know before. I didn't know that key before. In the scripture, in 2 Corinthians, I think it's 2 Corinthians 6, 4 or 6. Therefore, the first time that this verse came to me as a revelation, because that was the key for me to be delivered for that situation. The verse told me, For when I am weak, therefore I am strong. That means, in every difficulty you are facing in your life, when your strength ends, the strength of God is just starting. 
some situation, you need to be completely broken for you to see the real strength of the Lord. Standing you up. Pushing you in everything you do. What was really surprising is that at work, in the ministry, in all of that, I was performing highly. Yes! I discover a strength that was not my strength. Because at the end of the day, when I went back home, I was weak. But as soon as I got outside, as soon as I went outside, for all the obligations I have in my life, there's kind of something coming to me to enhance me and to give me that strength that I don't even know. That was the first step. I have discovered that. And the second point, my pastor told me, if you trust the Lord in your situation, where many people need, for example, 10 years to really, 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 really be transformed after such a situation, such a difficult situation, if you trust the Lord, believe me, God has the power to do it in three days. Yes. In three days. So I bow down before the Lord, trusting the Lord, trusting the Lord, and in a very short time, in a very short time, I began to feel, to feel, you know, no anger, no jealousy. I say no anger in my heart. And by the way, I do have a good relationship with my former wife. A good relationship. No anger. No anger. I say to people, I will never speak badly about her. Never. We have been married seven years. I will never. I will never do that. Never. I am simply working my way and moving forward. Looking forward. Why? Remember what I always tell you. Your future is inside you, not outside. All what you want in your life is already inside. God has already downloaded it inside you. So as long as you trust that God and that you make the decision to move forward, believe me, He has many things better for you. Much more than you can ever imagine. According to Ephesians 3, 20. To whom who is able to do in our life exceedingly, abundantly above what we can ever imagine. Are we together? Are we together? So, what I want to let you know, that heart is the heart when God finds this, he says, I have found the man after my heart. I remember that even in the ministry, even in the ministry, there are some situations I was praying for someone. I simply lay my hand and a demon is rebuked. Without me having any kind of effort to do. Why? God is acting. God is acting in my life. I know that through that situation, even my level of anointing has increased. Because I have remained faithful. I've never been seeking for a woman and stuff like that. No. I've never had relationships. No. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Until now. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. 
That is why, even when God told me, go to UK, the ministry was there. I knew I would take that decision for God alone. Even if I had another proposition in France, that's all right. I come for the ministry. Why? I am much more interested in fixing the burden of my Lord in London. So the heart of God. In some situations, believe me, when it comes to some sacrifice, remember that you will never reach a high level of glory, anointing, everything you want without a sacrifice. It's not biblical. I discovered that the secret to the spiritual power is death. Is death, believe me. I have been passing through. So in some situation, it might be difficult for you to make the decision to set everything apart and to take some decision in your life. But as long as God is the one who is asking you to do that, believe me, He has something higher for you. He has something higher. Just trust the Lord. By the way, in that story of Hannah, after she offered that boy to the Lord, she came back. She didn't have any guarantee to have another child in, you, in her life. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? After that boy, she had five children after. That means the one she gave to Lord, God had multiplied by five. He had multiplied by five. And before all of that, her womb was closed. And what's really surprising in the Bible is that the Bible says, the Bible says, God had closed her womb. God himself. God himself. I wonder whether God has closed something in your life. If God has closed something in your life, believe me, that is for his glory. That is for his glory. That is for his, regardless what you are passing through. Please, simply ask the Lord the grace to develop, to develop, and to develop that heart. That heart. The heart of the Lord. 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 The heart of the Lord is built in suffering. The heart of the Lord never complains about God, but is raising thanksgiving instead worships instead. Amen? The heart of the Lord is full of love, full of passions, full of forgiveness, and always willing to help all these people. The heart of the Lord is always concerned about the suffering of others. Not only myself, not only me, but also the others. And last but not least, the heart of God is the dimension of death to oneself. That means I am able to make the decision to die to myself for Him to really live in me. He will never be able to fully live in me until I make the decision to die to myself. Are we together? You cannot have two captains in the same boat. It's not possible. It's either him or you. Please, it's either him or you. It's either him. I'm talking to someone today. It's either he or you. You cannot have both of them. No. If you want to fulfill your plans, fulfill your plan. But remember one thing. The key to success in life is to fulfill the plan of God. So even if you manage to become the prime minister of England, 
if that was not the plan of God, you might be successful from human's perspective, but not from God's perspective. Never, 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 never. Before I went to the UK, a company suggested me to multiply by three my salary to rest in France, to stay in France. I don't think that was from God. I don't think that was from God. I came here and I see the hand of God. So being successful has nothing to do with the human standards. Yes. So maybe you have a decision to take in your life. Maybe you are facing a situation where you don't really know which decision you should take. One part of your heart is asking you to accept that proposition or that person whatsoever or whosoever. And the other part is asking you something else. Please, by the grace of the Lord, ask that wisdom to the Holy Spirit but have that heart seeking really what God wants and what is really really important for God in that situation in any decision you have to make please the first question that needs to come into your mind if where is God interest where is God interest God bless you Hallelujah. Let's go